Hello, welcome to another session of the Global Foresight Summit. This year is organized by the APF, the Association of Professional Futurists, the World Future Review and Fast Forward. We have now with us for this session, Carla Paniagua. Carla is co-editor-in-chief of the journal Economia Creativa. She's the director of the Design of Tomorrow program at Centro in Mexico. Uh, she's also regional editor of the Journal of Futures Studies for LATAM and Chief Design Officer at PUNC. Uh, she's going to uh, present now Tenqua. Tenqua is a participatory futures workshop developed by Centro uh, over six years of research. So we are really looking forward to hear more about this. Hello, Carla. Welcome. Hi, Fran. Thank you very much for having me. So the stage is yours. You can start when you want. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Well, let's go. Mm, I have a story to share. The neighborhood's name where I grew up is Del Mar. Here's the location. From the sea is uh, the actual name. This, is, the, this place is famous for the worst reasons, I must say. There you can find one of, of the most ruthless criminal groups of Mexico City, Cartel de Tlahuac. You can also find many illegal businesses, brothels, safe houses, drug dealing places, gambling houses, and so on. I remember once a good friend of mine called me in the middle of the night and told me, I don't know how, but I'm completely wasted and some ladies are on my lap. I think I'm in your neighborhood. Please call the Marines. True story. My, na my nave is also famous because there you can find the biggest flea market in Latin America, Las Torres Market. It is famous not only for the economic impact of all the transactions, but also for all the garbage on the streets because of the market. Even though in La Del Mar you can find the finest green enchiladas in the whole world, I, and I mean it, I swear it, just a few people know it. But everybody knows that there are many sinkholes because those lands used to be chinampas for farming. After the 2017 earthquake, many cracks appear in the streets, destroying houses. Um, and must say to this day, the inhabitants live among the gaps, waiting for the government to solve the problem. This is perhaps a very extreme case. The truth is, as the, as the great philosopher Brett Michaels once said, every rose has its turn. Every neighborhood has its cracks. Not long ago, I spoke with some residents of Polanco, one of the Mexico City's most flamboyant neighborhoods. They complained about the plague of ticks in Lincoln Park and how unsafe the zone became because of shootings and assaults. I wonder which are the cracks in your neighborhoods? Which are the thorns of your roses? Please share your comments. How can we use the fissures of our neighborhoods as an input for a foresight process? That's the question Paulina Cornejo and I made to ourselves six years ago. She runs the social hub and I lead, I'm the one with the mustache. I lead the Futures Studies apartment at Centro, an educational institution focused on creativity located in the middle of a highly complex zone. I mean Centro, not creativity. I hope creativity lives everywhere. Centro is an institution to develop wit 
and we are in the middle of a neighborhood, you can check uh, in, on this peak the huge contrast be, between the campus and the neighborhood that surrounds. Uh, we are in the middle of a neighborhood full of troubles that challenge our wit every day. We have insecurity, poverty, lack of access to public services, corruption, and so on. So we create this workshop that we have been improving over the years to work with our neighbors and use the discomfort as an engine to imagine different futures for the sun. The sequence of the experience is simple and is inspired by a generic process. Here you can see Joseph Boros' version of this generic foresight process, inputs, perspective, analysis, outputs, and a strategy. To play Tenkwa, you invite people to team up and create an imaginary neighborhood with real troubles where the players come from different locations. And we use the right to the city as a framework so the players choose topics like access to public services, mobility, education, safety, among others. Then they share those gaps they have detected in their hoods, using these references as signals to imagine long-term scenarios. Once they elaborate on contrasting future stories, they choose the one that best represents the desired future, and the players reflect on the actions they can take from their current situation citizen role to influence reality in the present. The sequence won't be strange to the people in this forum because many of you have years of experience guiding foresight processes. The specific focus of Tenkwa, unlike other scenario models, is that it concentrates on the negative aspects, the cracks, that jeopardize the whole exercise of the right to the city and uses them as a stimulus for thinking about the future. The rest happens more or less as we usually do, all of us. We make scenarios with different formats, covers, headlines, postcards, models, posters, depending on the participant, participants' skills, participants' profiles, the time and the materials we have. And then we agree on actions to carry out in the present. Here you have some examples of covers of the future. Um, so Tenkwa model has been iterated across six years, and we have played with different communities around the world. Here you can find uh, examples of postcards on, from the future that are inspired in Matthew Mano's models of impact uh, model. Okay, so as I said a moment ago, Tenkwa's model has been iterated across six years and we have played with different communities around the world. Of course, our neighbors at Centro, but once the experience became popular, Tenkwa has traveled around the world. We have played with audiences from the US, Peru, Colombia. We could say that at this moment, it no longer belongs to us, which is good. I think because it means that people have appropriated the grammar and have refreshed it and improved it. Last year, for example, someone invited me to play Tenkwa and I was amazed because they changed some rules. For example, they decide to make only dystopian scenarios and they didn't use any other archetype as we usually do. I call this version Prepper's Tenkwa and I found it very sparkling. Nowadays, Paulina and I are working on making new improvements to the card deck. Um, we're going to change the design and add new cards to explore new angles, always using fissures as an input because that is the soul of the tool. And that is the reason why it is called Tenkwa, which means broken in Nahuatl language. We are also refining Recalculate, recalculating the way in which the game includes the different stakeholders in the system and the design of the strategy to affect change after the game ends. 
Uh, one of the most important lessons I have learned from this experience is that Arjun Apadurai could not be more right. The future is a cultural fact. It exists because interest groups, tribes, communities, organizations, families, and these different forms of organization must actively collaborate in rethinking the future wherever possible. It is not feasible to think of participatory futures without the genuine participation of all the stakeholders involved in the system, at least not if we want to generate a real impact. That's what I think. Um, regarding the impact of Tenqua, perhaps you wonder about it, and I have to be honest. Our impact assessment is still poor. And the end, at, the, at the end of each workshop, sometimes we know the decisions that people play, uh, plan to make in the next few days, but we can't always confirm if these decisions are true and if they are going to concrete these decisions and if the expected a change already happens. Sometimes our middle term, term decisions that require more time. In this sense, we identified a critical aspect that we need to work on. Uh, in Mexico, pre people from marginal strata who form gangs often say, mi barrio me respalda, my hood backs me up to express the gang members are being supportive. Tenqua is a game because it has a sequence, a grammar, a, a vocabulary that invites players to share those things that bother us in an intimate and fun way, turning that share, that share annoyance, that share anger into a creative engine. That's why Tenqua motto is my hood backs me up. How can we be supportive and proactive with our needs? That's the question. If you want to learn more about this experience, you can download Tenqua here. We are going to share a link with all of you. Fran, if you can help me with the first link, please. Unfortunately, by now, uh, the cards, the deck cards, it is only in Spanish, but it will be available in English around August of this year. If you want to have further information about all the research process, I recommend you to check this paper. It was published uh, last year in Elizabeth's journal, Thames of Design, issue 36. Fran, if you help me sharing the second link. Uh, and if you want to know more about our one year program on future studies at Centro, uh, we can check, you can check all the information uh, in the third link that we are going to share uh, with all of you. And now I will be very glad to read your, your questions. I hope I can answer some of them. Thank you very much. And this is my contact data. I will be very glad to hear from you. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing so I can read your comments. Okay. So, mm hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Do we have any questions? Let's see the people uh, start sending questions. I have one question because you say that you identified a critical factor you 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 need to improve to yeah. to improve tenko. Well, what what was it? Uh, yes, because the first process is supposed to have four chapters. You see, first of all, you need to analyze the inputs of the system, and then you go to the prospective analysis. And then you have the outputs, I mean the long-term scenarios, 
and then you choose one that you consider is the more desirable scenario and then you're supposed to design a proper strategy to uh, to um, to make that the scenario to become that the scenario true to to apply that the scenario in 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 the reality uh, or to avoid the undesir the undesirable scenario. So I think uh, the 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 most uh, weak phase of our of our game is the strategy. We need to improve the strategy because we don't have enough information about the decision making. Uh, even even though we have information because people share with us what do they think they want what do they want to do in the first uh, days before the experience we don't have the proofs uh, we don't have enough evidence uh, and we're supposed to have it so we can have a uh, four chapters of the full sequence with enough evidence so we need to work harder <laughs> and we need to to have further information uh, in order to have i mean a scientific protocol so we need to improve that the strategy that that is the the fourth phase of the fourth stage of every foresight process mm. I think we have comments. How do you ensure, ensure buying and create a space safe when working with the skeptical communities that may not have trust in experts and so forth? Thank you, Martin Richards. I loved your question. I think if they come to your workshop in a way that's a signal of trust, they are trusting you because uh, they are giving you time. They are giving you the community, sharing with you time. They want to be there. So that's a first signal of trust. But of course, we begin the workshop with an immersion um, talk to have more rapport. And we empower the participants to let them know that they are the experts because you are the expert in your own neighborhood. So we don't know the conditions, we don't know, we don't know the real troubles, we don't know the real cracks. So we always invite them to share the information, recognizing firstly that they are the experts. So we empower them, we we recognize that first of all, uh, to make uh, to to create a proper atmosphere and to make them to feel to make them comfortable and it works i think do you think that lisanne brook is asking do you find that working with the discomfort contributes to the engagement because it feels more relevant to people affected by it absolutely absolutely lisanne i must to say that even though the participants sometimes are are not uh, living in the same neighborhood or even in the same city, because uh, that already happened. Uh, sometimes we have participants that are not living in the same neighborhood, uh, in the same postal code, in the same postal zone. Uh, they share the same kind of troubles they share the same anger. So once you start sharing those troubles that that I, I know you, uh, you can uh, you can understand uh, the point of view of all the of the all the participants. So I think it works very good once you can share those troubles that annoy annoy you all the time, that bother you, all that uh, troubles that happened in your neighborhood, all the troubles that you have 
for example, in Mexico City, we have prob problems with insecurity everywhere. So if you, to, if you talk with someone else about insecurity, uh, you can share the same kind of experience, I think. It's pretty easy to to share that atmosphere, and it's pretty easy to understand uh, that people feel insecure, scared, uh, angry. So yes, the the emotion is pretty similar, even though sometimes you are not in the in the same neighborhood or in the same city. Um, Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for your questions. Uh, one last question. What impacts have been seen on his influence on and how, how was the sens sensitization process in the objective population? Well, as I said a moment ago, we, we have a huge, uh, a huge pendant task. Uh, about the impact assessment because we are trying to make an influence in the way people decide on participatory in, in public policies and we don't have enough information yet to make a, a good diagnosis so we don't have enough information to have a real and and deep a proper and a proper diagnosis about the impact in public policies. We're supposed to have that, that information, I think, maybe next year, but not now. We, we don't have enough information now because we have opinions, we have surveys, we have um, models, we have prototypes, but that's not enough to make a proper assessment. With scientific, with a scientific protocol, we're supposed to run a proper scientific protocol uh, to make a, a, a thick statement. So I think that's a huge pendant and critical task that we're supposed to solve this year, and we are going to write a new paper about that uh, and publish it as soon as possible. Do you invite only the vecinos? Or todas las partes interesadas. Thank you, Fernanda Eber. First of all, we, we started, in the beginning, we started inviting only our neighborhoods, only our neighbors, and suddenly uh, people from another neighbors became to the worship because we, we have a lot of editions of the same worship. So we have a um, many workshops in the same season and the participants uh, change suddenly so in the beginning we had only neighbors but, but then that changed and it became a very interesting change uh, because then you have people from uh, Polanco, America, Naples, different uh, zones of the city, uh, arguing or not arguing, but sharing information and sharing the same emotions about the troubles of the city, insecurity, mobility, education, uh, access to, to public services. And then you can understand that even they live in different zones they share a common a common annoyance eh, mexico de f demasiado especial yes claudia benjumea como trabajan diferentes colonias para analizar el futuro de cada una con todas sus diferencias how, how do you work with different neighborhoods to analyze the future uh, considering the differences between the 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 names, I must to say, Claudia Benjumea, that instead of working in the differences, we work in the similarities. We work in the we use the common cracks, the common future fissures, or, or the common troubles between names to think about the futures. So 
I think Tenkwa's uh, framework is different. We don't make a, a focus in the differences, but in the similarity. Mm, great creation of generative dialogue, dialogues. I hope, I hope so. Thank you, Martin Richard. Um, what are the your greatest frustrations in applying this approach? Thank you, Bart Edes. I think my greatest frustration frustration is to feel that we are not doing enough yet. We are supposed to do more because we are an edu an educated institution, so we are supposed to be. We're supposed to promote the change of our neighborhood, and we're supposed to help and work harder to improve our neighborhood. So we work hard to do that, but I think we're supposed to do more and to go further. So that's my big frustration, but I'm working hard to make a difference that's what i do every day that's what we do every day uh, thank you thank you for all the questions i think i think we are done thank you Fran. yeah thank you very much carla it was amazing your session uh it's really great to to see your work at centro with tenkwa so thank you. hope that you keep working hard with this yes we will thank you very much for this lovely session and i will be glad to hear from you please write me or write me you can reach me on twitter email please uh, i invite you to use tenkwa cards and to share with us the your experience is going to be very nurturing for us to improve the the workshop framework thank you Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we are back in 15 minutes with the next session with Silvia Galusel. So see you there in our website. Bye bye.